association chat will get started in just a second. But before that, let's hear from Blake Alvin for this episode's podcast tip. Associations are usually trying to communicate with existing members and attract new members, and sometimes communicating information to the public. With so many forms of media available, it can be hard to know which is best for which situation. You can spend a ton of time, energy, and money really quickly. But what's the best way to maximize your efforts? Video is one of those options. Now, I'm not against video, but to do video well constantly can be costly and take a great team. And once you have a great video, getting somebody to sit down, watch, and absorb the information can be tricky also. I want to repeat those words again. Sit down, watch, absorb. With a well-made audio show, the audience is now freed from the screen and all the distractions that go with it. You can listen to a podcast anywhere, on a daily commute, at your kid's little league game, mowing the lawn, vacuuming, doing your expense report, going for your daily run, making dinner, going to lunch. This allows the listener to find out more about your organization and topics on their time and when they want it. And if done right, it can be more intimate, technical, and human all at the same time. So to sum up, a podcast is cheaper than video, very intimate, eyes free and on demand, typically gets longer listen times with a deeper dive, and is easier to get somebody who's camera shot. So give a podcast a try. You can thank me later. For more tips and tricks and free information about podcasting, go to humanfactor.net. Welcome to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor, talking about all things association, nonprofit, and anything else that pops into my mom's head. And now, here is your host, Kiki Latalian. Hey, mom, can we go to Hot Topic when you get home? What? She's always asking for more money. What is more, that? We need more money. <laughs> We got to get more sponsors. I don't know. Speaking uh, of sponsors. Topic, come on. Okay. So sponsors, I want to say thank you to Human Factor, who produces this show. You're Woo! welcome, my darling. Thank you. Thank you. And also to Amplify Growth. Thank you. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank Your you. You're darling. Me. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's so great to be here. Blake, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Um, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? A rock star. A rock star. Yes. How's that working? Well, first Superman, <laughs> then a trash man, a then trash a policeman. Man? They got to ride on the back of trucks. How cool is that when you're four what? years old? What? That is kind of cool, I guess. You wanted to be the center of attention. Yeah. And then I figured out I was better in this room, uh -huh. and I could make more money in this room that I'm sitting in now. Well, than... it's it's very interesting. You know, the thing about associations and people in the association world is you rarely find somebody who says, you know what? When I, really I started wanted to... out, I wanted, to, I wanted to work as an association executive. I wanted to work in the association industry. Uh, when I got started in associations, I didn't even, you know, I hadn't even really considered that. You didn't know there an was industry. an association know for associations. Was. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think Do you about think it. the great Kikini wanted to do what she wanted to do? She may have always known. That's my setup to let the you, great Kikini. To let you I know. The she's great coming Kikini later. will be coming later. So after we talk with our guest, our special guest today, we will have a visit, a special visit from the great Kikini. Yes. So um, stick around for that. Again. You want to stick around. I mean, Dory's going to be good and all, but. Dory's going to be great. The she's going to help us level up in our careers. Speaking of which, let's introduce our special guest today. Who is this person? This is Dory Clark. Now, Dory Clark, I want you to know, Dory, that I have, I'm going to put up your website over here here i have um listened to several different webinars that you've done you've been interviewed multiple times on podcasts I've, I've tuned in for those i'm a big fan i have uh i think i've read three of your books and so i read stand out entrepreneurial you reinventing you and um you're i actually remember driving down there i was listening to an audible version and uh, I was driving down the road, and it ha kept hitting the back button the pa so I could listen to the last 30 seconds of the same segment over and over and over again so I could get that piece in my head. So you made a Dory rap mix? Is that what Dory you're telling me? It was a Dory rap mix. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's a totally different <laughs> segment like, that we haven't thought of. I know. Up. We could, I have porn music. We should do rap battles, I think. But <laughs> that's not a rap. That's definitely not a rap. All right, um, fine. Whiner. But, whiner. 
but it was it was phenomenal and so I've been a big fan I'm glad that you're here I think after the first of the year you know people have their careers and their plan you know for how they're going to improve upon themselves whether they say they do or not I think that everybody kind of thinks about it you Um, are you are and you're doing great thank you Blake I really appreciate yes I'm checking those boxes yeah but the thing that I think that um, is powerful about what you do is that not only are you always leveling up your game, but you're sharing all of these things that you learn with all of the rest of us. And so today for Association Chat, I thought we could talk a little bit about that, how people could go about proactively creating the careers that they want. You know, So let's start out <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I wanted to start out by talking about – um, this idea of self-assessment. I mean, where do you even begin? Dory, where do people start when they're looking at their careers and they say, God, I don't know, wh- where is it that I want to go? How do, they, how do they begin that process? Yeah, so if people are feeling a little dissatisfied with, with wherever they are currently, uh, oftentimes it, the, you know, the conversation often begins with the assumption that you know where you're going, and then it's, you know, okay, we'll just, you know, make the plan, execute the plan. Uh, but of course, the, the first step is really figuring out, well, you know, what is the destination? And for a lot of people, that can be a very amorphous process, and a frightening one, honestly, because when you're a grown-up, uh, many people expect themselves or fear, fear and feel that the rest of the world will expect them to have the answer. The the state of being in uncertainty and not really being sure what the destination is can be a little bit discomforting to people. Mm -hmm. So what I like to suggest, I mean, there's a lot of ways, of course, that you can approach it. Um, The first one is understanding that you're probably not going to have the answer. And so I, I like to suggest that people write down a range of options. You know, most people can probably narrow it down to I don't know, a half dozen possibilities. That's that's usually broad enough that they can do that. And then uh, what I I like to suggest, and and I, I spend some time talking about this in my book, Reinventing You, is that for a while, you should be in the phase where you are seeking out disconfirming advice. It's often a lot easier to narrow down what you don't want to do as Mm -hmm. compared to figure out what you do want to do. And so if you have maybe a half dozen things, oh, well, I could do venture capital, and I could do photography, and I could be a travel writer. Well, okay, over the course of, let's say, six months, give yourself an assignment to find out as much as you can about these potential professions. That could be reading books. It could be doing informational interviews. It could be spending time on blogs to sort of see what's being talked about in the industry and try to find information that will enable you to whittle down the list and and figure out things that, you know, oh, I didn't realize that investment bankers worked 120 hours a week. Maybe that's not the right thing. Or, oh, I didn't realize that being a florist meant that I'd have to spend all day in, in, you know, 45 degree, uh, you (laughs) know, chill houses. I don't like sweaters. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's it's um I heard a uh, a recorded version of you speaking to the the National Speakers Association. I almost went to that conference just because you were speaking there. Oh, and you almost. I did. I, well, almost, I, I not quite, out. Dory. I Sorry. At the last minute. I was like, maybe uh, next time. Um, but <laughs> I I you know, listened to your talk and you know, one of the things that you mentioned was it was during you do this self-reflection on a regular basis. You had been leveling up and you've been going out and speaking really hard and you've been, you know, doing a lot of it on the road constantly. And that was, um, you know, the story you tell is about how you began to look at, you know, well, is this really the best way? Shouldn't I have these different lines of revenue coming in? Shouldn't I be, you know, touring's pretty beautiful, brutal. Well, and the thing is, well, you would know, like with music and stuff like that, um, touring's brutal. It's hard on your body. It's hard on your relationships if you have somebody back home, and and so with things like that, you always have to constantly be assessing, you know, and reassessing: Am I doing what I'm happy? doing. And I think all of us, though, whether it's being on the road or not, because there's so much disruption, because there's so much happening in all these different industries, we should all be kind of on our toes thinking, how do I feel about this? And am I prepared if I have to make a shift or a change? You know, um, what are some of my options? So like when somebody's going about their day and they they think, well, I don't know, you know, Kiki and Dory, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this. And does that mean that I should learn how to code? Does that mean I should? So they they 
come up with all of these different answers, and then they try to test them, and they try to figure out what's not the answer. They come up with their answer, they think, that they want to focus on, then what? Yeah, so once you have something that feels like a, a reasonable hypothesis, you... I, I think throughout the process, you have to be really gentle with yourself and understanding that it is going to be the exception uh, where there's a person who can just who can just call it and say, "Oh, this exactly this," and then that's that's mm -hmm. the perfect answer. There are always surprises that you discover along the way, and so it's a lot easier and better, I think, if you view everything as a hypothesis to test along the way. I mean, this is something that gets talked about in the high-tech startup world now a lot. You know, we talk about agile and you talk about the, the lean startup methodology. You need a very similar viewpoint with your career because obviously this is a very personal thing. When we're talking about, you know, what do you do for a living? That's, that's the primary way that at least in North American culture, most people actually make sense of their lives and yeah. make meaning in their lives. And so to, to feel like that's uncertain or that's in disarray can be very threatening to people on an identity level. And so we, we need to just understand, look, if we make this an all or nothing high stakes thing, well, I said I was going to be a photographer, and if I'm not a photographer in the next eight months, I, I will have failed. Well, of course, that is going to feel intimidating. It's going to be threatening enough that you, you may not take any action because mm -hmm. it just feels so severe. You may feel like you forced yourself into a corner, like, well, if the option is quitting my job or pursuing my dream, I can't afford to quit my job, so I guess I'll never pursue my dream. I mean, we turn everything into these black or white things. Instead, what we ought to be doing is think about, okay, how can we do small tests along the way to learn more, get more information, and really begin to say, do I enjoy this? Is it something that I'm good at? Is it something that I want to pursue more? And then as long as possible, try to pursue it on the side, build it up so that you have a client base, you have experience, you have uh, a base you can draw from, a financial base. And then if you want to make a transition, it'll be a heck of a lot easier to do it. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to something on the way driving to the studio this morning, um, and the guy shared this, another aud audi audible book, you know, and uh, you do a lot of those. I do a lot of those. I'm in the car, you know, yeah. um, and he was he was sharing this saying that I'm sure everybody's heard, which is, you know, the if the grass is greener on the other side of the street, fertilize your lawn, you know, Ooh, and it, it starts with sort of, yeah, instead of thinking maybe I should go over there and do that other thing maybe what I should do is just, and I think that's good for people who are looking at personal development and looking at ways that they can, maybe you just need to try um, something new and feed your mind where you are. Well, and I have a thought on that too. Like, uh, I, I think it was, I, Mike Rowe was talking about this and he was talking about like this whole notion of going for your dreams. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm a five foot eight white guy, but I'm going to be in the NBA. That's kind of <laughs> like leads to delusions and stuff. <laughs> Um, so do you have any thoughts on that, Dory? Like the going for your dreams, like when is it delusional and when is it, um, when is when's it possible? It it? Yeah. When's, when's it, it worth yeah. it? And as opposed to I'm sitting behind a bunch of flashing lights right now and I'm way better at that than being the front man in a, in a rock band, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I think, I think that, you know, there, there's, there's a reason Mike Rowe or anybody else who uses that analogy does, which is, is sort of the extreme example. But I, I think that the, the part that's a little bit risky about that is that it, it, it implies that it's more common than it is. I would say that it is actually extraordinarily rare that there is a situation where someone is fundamentally incapable of fulfilling whatever their mm -hmm. dream is. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, the examples in our modern society as knowledge workers, where you just literally can't do something because, you know, oh, well, you know, it used to be like, well, you're a girl, you can't do that. Well, you know what? Girls can do a lot of things yeah. now. And certainly sports is probably one of the very few uh, activities where, you know, Might you're either six foot seven or you're not. And, right. you know, you can't do that. But, for for literally almost anything else. I mean, if you 
if you want to be uh, an elite performer in any field, do you need 180 IQ? Pro- probably not. I mean, that, that doesn't hurt. But if you are a reasonably smart person, but you are willing to work exceptionally hard, and if you are willing to do the things around the edges where you can add value, maybe you build up a really great network. Maybe you prove yourself to be really amazing at customer service or mm-hmm. client relationships. Those are things that can make you equivalent to someone that may have better, quote unquote, natural abilities. I think that the the key metric for almost anything is, are you willing to do the work and are you willing to make the the trade-offs that are necessary? That's where people fall short. It's not, you know, oh, my dream is impossible. What do I do? It's no. Are you willing to give up your Saturdays? That's yeah. literally pretty much it. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? What are you what and, are you willing to give up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I I agree. And I think that I think that um it's interesting because I look at I look at I, I think people kind of toe the line. They if they do dare to venture out, we have so many ways to do side hustles now. And I think that people feel that they're being adventurous enough to get a side hustle, but they don't start, they don't do the small tests like you would, you know, using the scientific method where you're actually testing out like how, you know, how can I go about doing this? I think they, they do enough that if they don't immediately, it doesn't take off. They feel like it's a failure or they feel like they're fine with just that. That's all that's going to happen. Instead of really approaching it, with the mindset of this is a test and so let's let's test this thing. So I think it's hard if you don't actually, you know, put a little strategy around it, right? And you Yeah, just- that's that's right. I think you raised such an important point. I mean, here's here's the magic thing that most people don't realize. If you're testing something, you literally can't fail. Failure yeah. <laughs> is not right. in the lexicon of the test because the whole point of the test is to get information. Right. And whether it is a yes or a no, you have gotten information. There, there, is, there is literally not such a thing as failure if you are in test mode. Whereas if you are the kind of person that, you know, and, and this is kind of how the, the cultural narrative is, but if, if you were doing the thing where it's like, oh, well, you've, you've secretly been slaving in your basement for the past seven years, and you've never told a soul, and you've done this perfect little creation <laughs> and put out of the world, and they don't want it, well, then, yes, of course, you've, you've failed, and, and now, you know, you, you, you feel horrible about your life. Yeah. Don't do it that way. Do something yeah. for two weeks, and then see if anybody wants it. The risks are so low. It doesn't matter. It doesn't reflect on you or your quality or your identity. It just is like a little piece of information. If they don't like it, okay, you know, make it green next time. Who cares? Yeah, I love it. I think that's great. And we test stuff all the time, which I love. One of the best things that's happened to this show is that um, we've decided to make these little tests all along the way. And it's been- People don't see most of them. No, they don't. <laughs> Except when they do, and that's the thing that they see the absolute most of. Yeah. Well, like you know what's segment. funny though, I think, is that is anyway. that we um people always like seeing the back seeing us test stuff. That's true. Like when we just say, the "Hey, test, we're going to be testing They like, want to see behind the scenes kind of. They want to yeah. see the I don't the, know what that means, but I I think maybe because yeah, it's a little bit voyeuristic to see somebody going through the trials, and failing right? And, and, and failing. failing at some stuff yeah. and it's not smooth and not perfect. And I mean, that's kind of, I, I feel like uh, with Photoshop and, and filters for everything, maybe the raw yep. stuff is a little more compelling these days. So let's bring this back to associations then. So let's like do. I think you said in the beginning, uh, associations typically no one said when they were little girls boy i want to be the executive director of the american fill in the blank association yeah i think i know two people who but maybe who but maybe um did that. but 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 seriously but but that said i think it's the same thing that i really enjoy producing podcasts for associations and shows and mm-hmm. working on television and doing music here and stuff like that and if i'd actually gotten my dream i'd be out on the road and the guys i know on the road are just miserable and and sort of, sort of when it comes back to associations, associations do really cool work. Associations do amazing things. Once think, you're in here. Well, and so, Dory, you speak about entrepreneurial pursuits, and it's really a mindset, I think. People, this entrepreneurship idea, people can have an entrepreneurial mindset and work for an organization and identify new 
new ways, new existences, new jobs for themselves, you know. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that you do in your books that I really appreciate is that you empower people to figure out what what it is that they you know who it is that they want to become and to go about it and not necessarily look for something that's sort of you know they don't have to completely you know leave everything that they've got they can reimagine who they are wherever they are and maybe they build a place for themselves where they are maybe they go out on their own one of the things that um you talk about and stand out is how people can stand out, how they can raise their profile and maybe even become influencers in their industry. You know, a lot of people are trying to do that so that they are more valuable and their, their positions and their jobs are more secure. Um, what are some things that association executives especially can look to do to sort of build up their profiles? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say the the interesting thing, I mean, just to uh, just to sort of build on, on what you were saying, you mentioned that, you know, a lot of people are are working to build their profile. I the, the asterisk that I put is I'd say a lot of people want to build their profile, but actually a surprisingly few number are, are, are really doing it, are really yeah. taking the actions. And so I think that the, a really powerful thing for people to realize is that if you do even a little bit, you are doing more than most people are. And you will set yourself apart if you do it consistently over time. I, I think sometimes people look around at, you know, the mass of quote unquote competition around them and they say, well, you know, why should I bother? There's so many people trying and it's so crowded. And the thing is, yes, it's crowded at the start, at this, you know, the starting line, but it is not at all crowded <laughs> at the finish line. That's true. And, and people it's just true. drop off. Yeah. I mean, if you can count the people on two hands that like you're thinking of when you say it's so crowded and and you that's not a lot, really, statistically. That's yeah, not a lot. I take it the high end, whatever it is. He's, Dory's absolutely right. As you get to the, the I'm doing a symbol with my hands, Dory. You can't see it. But yeah, like, he's I'm doing, doing a pyramid he's thing. He's doing this, is what I'm he's doing. doing pyramid stuff. Yeah. But uh, as you get to the top, it's, he's absolutely right. Never really thought about that. Yeah. It's cool. Well, I, like I you know, um, it's good for people to hear that because I do think that they get dissuaded from even trying in the very beginning. And I think that um, a lot of times they, they see, they hear these words like you have to do video or you have to get out there and do this. You have to be a public speaker. And they're like, I'm not that person, but, but they don't have to be that person. Right. I mean, totally. you, there are different ways that they can uh, raise their profiles. Yeah. This is a really important point as well, Kiki, that people, people sometimes feel like they're getting the message that they have to do everything simultaneously. And so they get kind of freaked out because they're like, well, clearly I can't do everything. And so then of yeah. course the answer is to do nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. It's too much. So, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I mean, the key is like, pick one thing, pick one thing and just kind of go deep on it. And you can pick the thing that suits your personality. So, so that hopefully it's easy. Hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it's additive. So, I mean, what are some things that association executives can do to build their brands, to build their, their profile? And, you know, the, the upshot of this, of course, is that it makes you more indispensable in mm-hmm. your job and in your field. Um, so blogging is fantastic, you know, sharing your ideas and your insights. And it, frankly, it's all kinds of content creation. So the full, it's, form agnostic. It could be writing through blogging or articles. It could be podcasts through audio. It could be video. It could be speeches, you know, whatever you'd like, whatever you're good at, you can try to do more of. That's an important thing. It could be um, commissioning or uh, or taking a lead on on doing important research. That's that's certainly a way to make a mark. If you're creating unique intellectual property that people think is interesting and valuable, you know, oh, that tells me something I didn't know about my business or about my industry. That helps you stand out. That's one way of doing it. Um, you could also cultivate a, a niche specialization that you become really an expert in. I mean, certainly as an association executive, you're called upon to do lots of different things and be kind of a renaissance person. Person. But in addition to that, if there's if there's kind of a subsector that you feel particularly passionate about, you could really study that. You know, do do interviews, learn about it, read about it, take courses on it, and you become known as kind of the go-to person for this facet. All of a sudden, that's an extra level of value that you bring to the people around you. Absolutely. I mean, I know that my um, oh, somebody's asking. Sayez asking, is this pre-recorded? No, this is absolutely. 
live it's right it. now. Unless yeah. it's in, unless it's so, past Tuesday at two forty five. No, I'm looking on YouTube live right now. So yeah, <laughs> if if you're if you if we were looking at this in the future, then yeah. it would be yes. But right now, Syed, you're so good. it's actually not live at the same time. So <laughs> thank you for typing. Did you have a question? Uh, no, I just wanted to know if it was pre-recorded. Maybe, maybe he does have a question well, and he'll ask it maybe if he, will. he can. Yes. Career. What else is in this book? Because you've read it and I have not. Well, which one? I mean, well, the, the one like, we're pr- plugging here. So, entrepreneurial you. Let's pull up the website again. All right, we can do entrepreneurial that. you. Isn't that the mo- that's the there? Most she is. Thing. I see her right on the site there. About. Would you like to read it? Well, this is we've got. So we've got the entrepreneurial you. We've got reinventing you. I love I love all of these though because for someone like me, they kind of overlap in certain areas, and then they go deeper in um, the ways that they don't overlap. So it's like uh, reinventing you. Anybody who's in the association space who finds themselves wanting to move from say, I work for an association to I'm an association consultant, they're reinventing themselves. And I've gone through that transition. You've done it a few times. I've done it a few times. And, um, you know, I was going to actually ask you a question about this. Uh, Adele Sears, good friend of mine. She has When and How and Epic PR. Um, We have this this, uh, event that's coming up on Thursday. There's her plug. There's the plug. Ding, ding, ding. You can go to (laughs) associationchat.com and find out more. Um, space is limited. It's very amazing. Um, <laughs> you, um, you talk a lot about, uh, you know, the opportunities that come about when people get together and it's the right people and the right conversations. And certainly when all of these people come together, you want to be primed to be able to talk to them about this, either who it is that you're trying to be or this reinvention of yourself And really, it's this idea of personal branding. It's this idea of how do you better convey um, the message and the story of who you are succinctly, like in a concise way so that people get it Like you were talking about an elevator pitch here? It's, I hate that term. Well, but but everyone knows what it is. Yeah. Elevator pitch. um, Why don't you do yours for Dory and see what she thinks? Oh, God, no. God, no. (laughs) No, no, no. Come on. But Dory, what, I mean, what is your advice for people who have gone through and and they are thinking, yeah, we're going to go that thing on Thursday or whatever that they're going to go to. I'm going. Um, You know, what's your advice to them about how to best represent themselves so that they are having those important conversations and maybe get past the fluff, right? Sure. So I think you raised a couple of important points, Kiki. The first one, in in talking about your introduction or your your elevator put pitch, we'll put it in uh, air yeah. quotes. Um, I think I think of course it's an important thing in the sense that we all need to be able to talk succinctly and effectively about who we are. You know, that's that's necessary if we want people to understand that. However, I think that some something that the cultural conversation gets wrong sometimes is that. When you talk about personal brand, a lot of times it gets it gets narrowed down and conflated with elevator pitch. And it, certainly what you say about yourself is a, an important part of your brand, but in no way is that the totality of your personal brand. Your yeah. personal brand is literally just your reputation. It is what do people think of you? And in some ways, what you say about yourself is kind of the smallest piece of that. Because they are getting an impression from so many other things. It's about, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you say about things in general? You know, how, what's your demeanor? Are you nice to people? How do you dress? What do they find about you when they Google you? Uh, what do people say about you when you're not in the room? All the things. And so really, you know, a lot of what I talk about in Reinventing You is about understanding all of the total inputs and, and how, to, how to be strategic about living your life so that it is in alignment with the impression that you would like people to have. You can't control with 100% certainty what they think, but you can certainly stack the deck in the sense that if you would like to be seen as whatever, you know, a creative person, a strategic person, you know, that you're actually doing the kinds of things that would lead one to believe that you are. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. think that's a, a big part of it as well. I love that. Because it's also, you're convincing yourself too, right? We have to be, especially... I, you know, I have these new new things, that new habits I'm trying to uh, do with the beginning of the new year. And I read this book called Atomic Habits that's just so good. And um, I'm trying to get him to come on on the show. Too. Who's him? 
Uh, clear. His last name's Clear. James, James. Clear. James Clear. I actually profiled him in Entrepreneurial U as Can well. Can you connect me, Dory? Oh Dory, my right gosh. now. Oh my gosh. Sure. So, so <laughs> I need to get him on. Um, send, send me a thing, Kiki, and I'll and I'll I'll be glad to forward it to him. And, and this is why him, Dory is amazing. Send, <laughs> send him a thing. He's a connector a, for sure. Yeah, super connector. Um, but yeah, James Clear, and and I because I really wanted to do these things um, and make these habits be realized by the end of the year. I wanted, I I want them to just be who I am. And one thing he says that the research shows is that, um, you have to think about that as part of your personality. I am the kind of person who works out every day. I am the kind of person who, and, and not to be, I'm giving up sleeping in, right? It's not that it's, I'm the kind of person who works out every day. I'm the kind of person who doesn't sleep in. And when you are in alignment with those things and you begin to personalize that and make that part of of who you are before long, it really is. Right. And so what you're saying is you have to be you have to take those things on and and, you know, say those represent those and stay in alignment with your own character. Right. It's yeah. amazing how some people are like, I'm the person who's never late and they're always late or whatever. Really? Yeah. P- because they want other people to believe it, but they're not actually doing the thing. They're not actually doing the thing. So. So how's it go? Let's get you. So you've been doing it. I know what you've been doing, but you've been doing it for three weeks now. And is it changing? Is it is your mindset changed? Um. I have a checklist. I'm also doing this habit of like checking everything off off of a, a list a list every day so that I can also add to that. But and I'm trying to keep the streaks going. Um, Dory, are lists approved? Do we like lists? Do you oh, like I lists? love lists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if you're if you're if you're ga- if you're if you're into lists, I have a I have a friend who wrote an entire book about lists and the power of lists called Listful Thinking. Oh, oh I love that. Yeah, her name is Paula Rizzo. I can connect you to her too. (gasps) Oh my gosh, you guys, we may have to cut. I like like Dory. We only have like five shows left in the season, though. No, I know, but well, then we have our break, and then we come back. Yeah, come back April second, so it'll be good. March, we're done. Yeah. Um, listful thinking. I love that. I love lists so much, and I love the way that you have taken ownership over your own life, but that you are sharing it with everybody else. Now, let's talk about stand up comedy. You do stand up comedy? Um, <laughs> yeah. I do a bit, yeah. You, so, tell so, us a joke. Did they get that all the time, stand up comics? Right what? Tell what us a joke. You? you put all of us on the spot. They right? always, no, I'm just saying they do that all the time, right, Dory? Right. Tell us a joke. Pe- people do like to do that, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she secretly hates them. Yeah, oh, they, <laughs> no. totally. I didn't do it. I said other people do it, you see. Go no, ahead. You asked Sorry. The, the, tr- the, trick, the trick about tell us a joke is that, is that literally nothing is, is funny when it's like one on one. You're just like, yeah, yeah, cool. It's yeah. like you, you need you need the power of the environment of the crowd to bring out the humor in something. I mean, it, it would be like like having um It's like play us red- a song. Yeah, exactly. Or it's like it's like having red wine if it's somehow been in the refrigerator. You know, it's like it, does, it doesn't even taste that good. It's, it's like what's the point? The, you need to yeah, air it's not out. Good. You need yeah, you, you need the yeah. right environment. That's right. good. But yeah. you are a stand up comic? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's amazing. I I I, I've, I've, I was really into it a, a couple of years ago, and I, I I still have kind of kept it on the slow burner. What I'm what I'm spending even more time doing right now, it's it's sort of interlocking things. Is I am in a program right now uh, run by BMI, the music publishing company, sure. which is a two year long training program in writing musical theater, and so I am I'm spending a, a lot of my comedic energy writing. Uh, comedy songs for musical theater. That is so oh funny. my gosh, that is, that so, is so cool. I, comedy is hard, you know. So obviously, you kind of figured out that I do the music thing, Dory. And I don't yes. know if this is true, but uh, musicians usually think comics are like amazing in what they do because I could never do it. I'm terrified, and a lot of times, comics are the same way with musicians. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine they're t- they're very very different skill sets. I mean, on the surface, it's like, well, you both stand up in front of a crowd, but it's like right. that's kind of the, the no. But I can hide behind my guitar. I'm hiding yeah. behind a guitar the entire time. You are there, and it's like I have a lot of theories on this that aren't that have nothing to do with associations. I'll it, tell you I know. It's just, cut. Run out. Yeah, we're done. All right. All right. So yeah, no, I, it's interesting though because I I do speaking, but I'm more of a breakout speaker, and I do some keynote speak. I'm trying to do more keynote. But I've got my eye on stand-up comedy. You do? Which scares Tell us a joke. Wow. Death. It scares me to death. Really? It would be so cool. 
I've been to some open mic nights where it's just brutal. Yeah. Oh. Where it's where do you live, Kiki? Are you in DC? Yeah, I'm in Alexandria. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's gotta there's gotta be some some clubs and places around there for there sure. There are there are Blake now Blake knows. He's I know. Gonna, uh, he's gonna hold me to. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> I know the local yeah. open mic nights too. I mean, they it's just brutal. You gotta fail first, right, Dory? Yeah, there, there's a lot of that. It's, it's, it's sort of learning, learning how to fail gracefully. It's uh, useful. It's, it's useful for all things in life, but it, it is, it is never more visceral oh. than being up on the stage because you're just seeing it in real time. You're like, oh yeah, that. Yeah. that here's, was here's the thing. I gotta say this. Hold on. So here's the difference between music and comedy, right? Music. I can have my friends come out and I play you a three minute song, and then everyone goes, right, right. But comedy, your friends are not going to laugh at all your jokes for 10 <laughs> minutes. They can't fake laugh the entire time, so they just sit there and the crickets are playing. Or they you know? get drunk and they just start doing their own thing. No, because it, it'll only know. be like three or four of your friends, too. That's yeah. the thing. It's brutal. I commend you, Dory. It's amazing. Like, Thank you. Thank as you. A, another musician saying I could never do that. Well, I'm going to have to hold off on my goals for it because um, this uh, this year, one of my things, I'm trying to keep it kind of quiet, but I'm like You have to. a talk show. I know, but I'm like, I'm just saying that like for this year, I'm not going to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, now you put I, it out just, there. It's tough. It's tough. And it's like, I didn't want to say it cause there's all these networking things, but I, you know, I'm like, I, I th I'm going to commit for a year. God, I spend the whole, like all the rest of the time. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to just take a year and get in good health. Get in and just, I've got a lot I'm trying to accomplish and focus and then I can go and I can, and. Be an alcoholic for the rest of your life. Be an alcoholic for the rest yes. of my life. All right. But so we have Dory. Any, what else are these books that Dory has? What else can we talk about with Dory? Well, we can talk about we uh, reinventing you. We've talked about we reinvention. We've like five minutes before Kikini might get here. So I know. Kikini. We've got right. to bring her on. Um, I, Dory knows association people. I mean, she works. She's just a keynote speaker. She facilitates. She, like, knows associations. So, Dory, you're speaking to association people right now and pri your association executives. What is the thing that you think, you know, this is a new year, that that for everything that you've written, I'm really teeing this up in a bad way. She's like, oh, God. Um, for, for everything that, that you've learned and that you've written, what's a message that you wish that you could send out to them that you think that they, they need to focus on for themselves? Yeah, well, I, I think there's there's kind of the uh, the micro and the macro, okay. right? Because my understanding of the it, what I've heard from people that I know in the association world is that there's kind of two parallel concerns. And I think it, it mirrors a lot of people in the in the corporate world, but it's especially acute with associations. I mean, number one, uh, industry is changing so much and technology is changing so much that there's this kind of constant question of how do you prove, I say in air quotes, the value of being part of an association to people like what, you know, in, in a, in a world where, okay, we have zoom, you know, why, yeah. why do, why do people need an association? Well, in the past it was like, oh, well, this is the only way we can connect and we have the annual blah, 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 blah. And you know, oh, you get this nice print magazine. Well, that's, they're not really so much things anymore and people have other alternatives. And so how do you convince your membership that this is that this is essential. This is yeah. indispensable. And even though, okay, we're not reading print journals really anymore, this is something that that really still matters for you and is is going to be worth not not just your passive check as a member, mm -hmm. but your active involvement. I think that's business challenge number one. And then number two, of course, is within that you yourself as a professional. How do you? get your true worth seen by your members, by your board? How do you make sure that you are recognized as being preeminent and, and valuable and essential to your organization? And though, I think those are the two levers that, that we always have to have in sight. And in my books, especially Stand Out, um, that's really what I talk about is, is how, to, how to rise above the noise and really make sure that, that you're being heard, not, not through being the loudest, because that's kind of a battle that no one can win. And frankly, you probably don't want to win it, right. but by being strategic and deliberate about the message that you are sending. There are so many ways that people can be heard. And I think that, you know, it's a shame to me that um, they dim their shine or, or they, they don't try 
um, harder when there there's never been more of a need, I think, for people to get their unique voices out and, and to to have this conversation that um, will propel. Associations are so powerful because they represent every possible industry you can think of, every possible group of people you can think of. And so because of that, we have the ability, associations have the ability to tr make so much transformation happen. And yet I think that with this um, reputation for being risk averse and for not wanting to rock the boat, a lot of people don't think that association executives are edgy, that they are um, th that they'll stick their necks out and and try new things and test the waters and all of this stuff. But I don't know that that's necessarily true all the time. Yeah, I think that just I think that just like we were talking about earlier, you know, um, with these stories about you know, when somebody's physically just not able to do something, I think maybe we should test our assumptions on associations. I think that maybe associations can be more creative and innovative. Um, How would we do that? How do we test? Ah, that's a good question. Mm. Well, we dig and we ask questions and we look for the people who are doing it. No, I, but I get it all the time because, as you know, I want to make edgy shows because the other side of my house is working with discovery and history and all those kind of things where mm -hmm. they want it. They want it loud, Dory. They want it as loud as I can possibly make it, literally. Yes, <laughs> I can believe it. <laughs> and uh, But I think, but they, it seems like they come around and eventually they do get get it, but then everyone follows. You know, like with, when, when they're dumping ice on everybody's head, yeah, oh, yeah, the ice yeah. bucket challenge. Yeah, the ice bucket challenge. ALS. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone then wanted a big viral video. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I mean I'm a little bit of a Pollyanna with associations. I get frustrated sometimes, you know, but um, it's because I care, and I think that um, I think that I think there are enough people that are out there. I know some people that are out there that are doing some amazing things. I mean, we're gonna have to get uh, Trevor, the executive uh, from. Uh, from Mensa, the stuff that they're doing. What's Mensa? Oh my God, uh, Mensa for the the highly intelligent, high IQ association of people. People. With yeah, that, they don't call me. You're not a Mensa. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got I, the T-shirt. Speaking of Mensa, I was yeah. at uh, a, the Bell House, which is this like very hip club in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I this was you know a couple of months ago, and I wandered in to this section and it was like and, and I discovered it, everyone kind of looked at me funny and, yeah. and I'm like oh and I see okay it's res it's a reserved section and I'm like oh sorry I'm like who is this reserved for they're like Mensa and it was an NPR show it was the, it was it was like a taping of I think it was ask me another for NPR and Mensa was the sponsor the president oh, of the local chapter of I Mensa see. did the introduction and then they had this whole roped off Mensa area so they are you know, they are they are going hip they are going Brooklyn Yes, there they are. Go, Look at that. I love that. You yeah. Love so, um, well, well, I edgy stuff. We do have the great kikini. We do have the great kikini. <laughs> nice transition. You like thank that? You, like, yes. Uh, Dory, thank you. Dory so can much. stick around if she wants, but I'm, she's a very busy lady. I'm well, sure. Well, yeah, and she won't get to see the great kikini unless she jumps over to YouTube. I yeah. think, right? That's that is true. Yeah, but I promise you. Well, I don't promise you. It might be worth it, Dory. <laughs> it might be worth Let's it. Let's plug the book and stuff before, yeah, just where in case people, she doesn't want to stick around. Where can people find more information about you? Where where can they best connect with you? Yeah, thank you so much. It's great. It's great chatting with you guys. Um, so if folks would like to, to dive in, learn more about ways to to reinvent, to uh, to stand out, to be more entrepreneurial, um, I, have, uh, I have several books out and I have actually more than 500 free articles available on my website, which is wow. doryclark.com. People can get them for free there. And also I'll just mention, I have a, a resource called the uh, Standout Self-Assessment, and it is a 42-page free guide that helps walk people through the process of figuring out how they can best stand out in, in their organization or in their industry. And folks can get it for free at doryclark.com slash join, J-O-I-N. J-O-I-N. I love it. Okay. And I just want to say, Michael Butera, I did not get a chance to make your comment, but I see it over here. Don't you think that unique voices and associations are a problem because executives are afraid of losing their job and traditions are overvalued? Ooh. 
we will save that discussion for the next time. The yeah. next discussion. Thank you, Michael, for for listening and for engaging with us today. And thank you so much, Dory, for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. Great to great to be here and take care. All right. Take so, care. All right. So um, now we have our next guest, and it's the great Kikini. Now, what was she talking about today? What do we want? What do you want me to ask her? Well, we talked a lot about, uh, or what are we going to talk about with the great Kikini? Well, should I just bring her on? Wait, wait a second. Okay. I'm telling you right. what's going on. So she got all of this mail. I don't know if you noticed in the mail room here at the studio, <laughs> but we walked in, you guys, and it's unbelievable. You know, Blake's here. I'm here. And who gets all the mail? The great Kikini. And so we got the most amazing amount. There was like, how many letters? Uh, well, we had, uh, put it this way, we had like 1,800 views in the first three or four days. It was ridiculous. Actually, it is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> we had so many views. <laughs> well, this is not shtick. Kikini. Not shtick, <laughs> actually. This is actually really true. Um, had more views on YouTube for the great Kikini. And so um, we needed to invite her back. We thought we would invite her back, and she graciously agreed. Um, I guess the moon, the stars, the planets aligned. aligned yeah. She decided that this was the right time to come in, and so I'm supposed to clear out, and we're supposed to make room for her. We selected a letter. It was hermetically sealed, uh, and we have preserved this letter for her, um, for her arrival so that we can ask her the questions we need to ask. And so why don't we invite the great Kikini to give us her, her answer? Yes. It will be. Uh, great Kikini, is that you? It is I, the Great Kikini. Great Kikini, welcome back. Uh, it's good to be here. Good, good to see you again. Yeah. You're looking well. Thanks. You, you lost a little weight. Ah, yes, but not spiritual weight. No, That's all here. no, no. Yes. I know you and I have been working out. I mean, I've been working out hard. It's true. Yes. It is true. All right, so let's see. I guess you know, as usual, what we're up to here. Oh, I do. I feel what you just said was perfect. It's about transformation. Am I right? Yeah, you are. Mm. You are. So, but for the listeners, at, at the um, for the listeners and the people watching on live on live YouTube and the live Facebook and wherever it is, I'm going to read the question for them. Okay. Oh. Okay. Read the question. This is from Matt in I think it says yeah Washington D.C. here. Mm -hmm. um, this one, look, yeah, here it is. To the Honorable Kikini, you're honorable, by the way. Uh, I am the head of membership for my small association, and all the exec team heard from the executive director and the board has suggested very seriously that we undergo a digital transformation. Have you ever heard that so far? I have heard of many transformations. Okay, but listen, here's the tricky part. They've already budgeted uh, for the year, but the executive director says we will make this happen. Kikini, will this happen? What does it mean? What does digital transformation mean? And especially, we have no budget for it. What do I do? What does poor Matt do? Associoso, speak to me, association, spiritual realm. It's speaking to me, Blake. Yes. Yes. So much disruption. So much need for transformation in the association space, yes. Ah, uh, so see you, so the spirits are communicating to me so clearly on this one. Digital transformation. Digital transformation. You are right, dear Matt from Washington, D.C., you are right. Digital transformation can mean many things, but in this case, it means only one. One? Only one. Matt in D.C., listen to my words. You will not have to worry any longer. Your budget will not be touched by this executive director, nor the board, for this digital transformation, no. No, I can tell you the spirits have spoken. 
And in your small association's case, your executive director will move you from using Link for group communication to Slack. To Slack. To Slack. <laughs> There's your digital transformation. You've done it, Kikiki. Once again, thank you. Boom. Drop mic. Drop oh, please mic. don't drop our mics. That wouldn't be cool. But no. Thank you for coming. I. I have another message, Blake. Oh, oh. Well, let's get some music going for that. All right. Blake. <laughs> yes, Great Kikiki. It is no longer enough to have only I, the great Kikini, here. Oh, is this an announcement? I have an announcement to make. The time has come. The time has come for me to bring a great seer from the great, oh, beyond. I almost lost my ball. Yes, I will be bringing, I will be bringing an assistant from the great beyond, another great seer with messages for the association realm. I see, I see. You must return. In a few months this will happen? It will happen. I shall not say when, but it shall happen. Watch for my return. Goodbye, Greg Akini. Goodbye. She is a wacky. I mean, can you believe that the the smoke cleared out of here? The spiritual fog cleared it clears out of right here out separately? afterwards. It's amazing. She's amazing. She's something. I wonder. I wonder what she's going to reveal to us next time she comes on. Well, you have an event that you want to show before we get out of here. Right? That's true. I want to talk about this event that's coming up. Check out. This event on Thursday. I mean, if you're in DC, if you love association chat, and if you happen to like mingling with creatives and people who want to do things that are a little bit new or different or test new ideas out for their associations, this Thursday, it's all about you. We're doing a Be a Creator Without the Risk, uh, Creativity Without the Risk Salon uh, in DC. And you can still get tickets right now. RPM Italian is where it's taking place. It's taking place. Is that a restaurant? Yes, okay. it is. It's Making beautiful. Making sure it's not some sort of it's, wacky ad firm it's, name. No, it's beautiful and fancy. Beautiful and fancy. And it's and the food's from good? four. Yeah, it is really good. What kind of food do they have? Uh, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, l'Italien. It's from 4 to 6 p.m., and you guys, this is not by accident. It turns out that if you are looking at timing, the best time for you to collaborate and think creatively is from 4 to 6 p.m. and during that time frame. And so we have planned it and organized it according to that so that you are in your best possible mindset to connect with these great people, artists, visionaries, rebels, Join us. Join us? Join us. Yes. All right. You ready to get out of here? Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Thanks for listening to Association Chat, produced by Amplified Growth and Human Factor. For more information on Amplified Growth, go to AmplifiedGrowth.net. And for more information on making podcasts for your association, go to Human Factor at HumanFactor.net. To hear past episodes, go to the Association Chat YouTube channel and subscribe. See you soon.